Hi, welcome to the Brain Injury Answers Podcast. This is Dr. David Glazer providing the answers you need when a brain injury occurs. This podcast is for educational purposes only. For treatment, please consult your physician. This podcast does not represent the Department of Veterans Affairs. All right, let's get started. Question, what is a seizure? This is a great question. Seizures are common after a traumatic brain injury. A seizure is when there is too much electrical energy in a person's brain. Our brains are not just filled up of blood vessels and brain fluid, but our brains are also electrical. Just like a wire can have a short circuit and not be able to handle all the energy, a seizure is when our brain cannot handle all the energy. This can then cause the patient to react in different ways. Therefore, there are various types of seizures. That's why you may see a patient having a seizure start shaking, such as shaking their arm. They may bite their tongue. They may have incontinence and go to the bathroom on themselves because they're not able to control their bladder or bowel at the time. Within the realm of a traumatic brain injury, seizures are divided into three types. There are immediate seizures, which occur within the first 24 hours of the trauma. There are early seizures, which occur within the first seven days after a brain injury. And then there are late seizures, which occur after seven days from the initial time a brain injury occurred. So there are various different ways to treat a seizure, and there are different reasons on why one would first treat a seizure. I will first explain the biological and chemical reason of a seizure developing after a brain injury. So the brain injury causes a lot of brain cells to essentially die and burst open. When the cell bursts open, a lot of chemicals are released into the brain. These include highly activating and energizing chemicals such as glutamate. This causes extra energy to occur in the brain and a patient who has sustained a traumatic brain injury is therefore much more likely to have a seizure. After seven days from the start of the injury, all those chemicals in the brain that were at high levels then plummet and go really low in the brain. Therefore, after a traumatic brain injury, one will often see a patient on medications that help to prevent seizures. The most common medicine that you'll see is called Kepra. K-E-P-P-R-A. The generic name for this medicine is called Levteracetam. Other medications that are sometimes used to help prevent a seizure is known as phenytoin. But you'll see phenytoin used less and less 
because you have to measure phenytoin levels within a patient. And so Keppra also has less side effects and one does not really need to measure the amount of Keppra in a person's bloodstream. So after those first seven days, if a patient did not have a seizure, a patient will be taken off of their seizure prevention medication. Because the whole idea of a seizure medicine is to quiet down the brain and the central nervous system, seizure medication can often delay brain recovery. So this is where one weighs the risks and pros, benefits of using seizure medication. One does not want the patient to have a seizure because that will further damage the brain. So one uses the medication to help prevent the seizure from happening when we know it is most likely to happen. And then the patient's taken off after seven days when the energizing chemicals then become very low in number. If a patient did have a seizure during those seven days, one will then oftentimes remain on the seizure medicine. A way to diagnose seizure other than from just looking at a patient and observing their actions during a seizure is using an EEG, an electroencephalogram, which places a bunch of electrodes on a patient's brain and then puts that onto a computer screen where a doctor or EEG technician can read the electrical patterns and determine if any of the electrical patterns are unique to a seizure. A patient who has had a brain injury oftentimes will have abnormal electrical signals on an EEG and these must be differentiated and determined to be different from seizure signals. After these seven days when the chemicals are low, your doctor might talk to you about using other medications that are not seizure medications, but medications say for mood, like an SSRI, because just like the energizing chemicals are low, other brain chemicals are low, such as dopamine and serotonin. But this discussion is for another podcast in the future. So again, seizure can be common after a brain injury, and it is preventable using medications, and if one were to have a seizure during those seven days or after those seven days, one will likely be on a seizure medication for more long term. Now, being that a patient with a moderate or severe brain injury has had a brain injury which has caused many cognitive and physical changes, this patient would not be ready to drive for quite a while. But in most states, if someone were to be ready to drive but is being treated for a seizure, then there are laws unique to each state because one would not want their loved one to be driving and have a seizure and get into an accident if one were to have a seizure while driving. Again, driving is really another topic for another future podcast. But just remember, seizures are common, and the patient will often be placed on a seizure prevention medication. And after those seven days, if one did not have a seizure, 
it is best to decrease and stop the seizure preventing medication. That's a wrap for today. Remember to email all your questions to braininjuryanswers at gmail.com. Check out the website www.braininjuryanswers.com. Thanks for listening.